Hey, happy Sunday. <clears throat> Sorry, happy Sunday. Oh my God. It is, it is damn near like the perfect day weather-wise. It does not get any better than this. This is fantastic. I love this weather. It is so nice. Um, it's 76 degrees. It, there's no humidity. It, it's, it's just perfect outside. It is absolutely perfect. I am loving this day. I'm going to get out and do a little bit of yard work later, get some leaves up. I don't even mind. Like, I, I'm looking for a reason to be outside today. It is so nice out. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, I ended up getting two videos out of the leaf crunching. I didn't have much to loop, but I made the best of it. I tried to loop it as best I could. Um, people seem to like them, which is cool. That's, you know, I'm glad they liked it. I, I think it turned out okay. I still think I can do better. You know what I thought I could do? I, I don't think I'm going to do it this year. Maybe next year. Um, take some big containers to somebody who has acorns. I actually want to go back where I went yesterday because she had these huge acorns. And they there's an old Bronco down the road right there. Old Bronco. An old, old one. Anyway, sorry. Make a um, make a video. Get, so get some big containers and get some of those big acorns because they make those loud pops when you step on them. It's really cool. White oaks make have smaller acorns and they sound different when you step on them. I noticed something yesterday. The people up there where I went yesterday into Virginia, they don't pronounce it acorn. They say acorn, acorns, acorns. And I'm trying to remember. I think growing up. I think where I grew up, people said acorns, acorns. But I guess I've become citified because I say acorn, acorn. We still take C-O-R-N and turn it into a two-syllable word. Corn, corn, <laughs> corn. I can't even say it any other way. My mouth just won't do it. I've been in kind of a philosophical mood since I woke up this morning. I had a dream last night, and it was very real. It was one of those dreams where you wake up from it and you think it actually happened. You know, it's just so real. I had this dream that I was back in the house I grew up in. And I have a lot of dreams where I'm back in that house. That house no longer exists. It was an old trailer, and it's been, it was removed and demolished many years ago. It's been long gone for a long, long time. But I have this dream that I'm back in that trailer. And I'm usually walking down. There was a little bitty hallway that went back to a little tiny bedroom. And I was going down that hallway. And uh, I can see, it's very detailed. I, I can see the paneling on the walls, that cheap, flimsy paneling that was so popular back in the 70s. I can see the paneling. I can see the linoleum on the floor. And then it will flash to something else. But I'm always in that little hallway. I don't know if something happened in that hallway and I've just repressed it or I don't know what it is about that little hallway in that trailer, but I go back there a lot in just in little bits and pieces in different dreams and it never really has anything to do with the dream and I'm not really sure why I'm there, but I, I, I find myself in that little hallway a lot. I don't know why. I don't know what that's about. It may be about nothing. Sometimes I think we, we, uh, we see meaning where there is none. It's an evolutionary trait. It can be beneficial. But sometimes I think it's overactive and we do see meaning where there's really not any. You know, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. It doesn't have to mean anything. But uh, anyway, so I had this dream last night. And I was in that little hallway and there was a man. I couldn't really see his face, but it was a man. And, and I said something about, I wonder what heaven's like or I wonder what, I wonder what the afterlife is like. I said something like that. And he had this deep voice. And he said, you're already there. And then I woke up. And it was so real. Like, oh my God. And I've thought about that. Like, what What if, what if we're already there? What if we're already dead? If this were your afterlife, how would you feel about it? Honestly, 
right now for me I feel pretty good about it I would be okay I would be okay with this being my afterlife and I, I, I'm very grateful for that I tell you I, I am very happy with my life the way it is right now and I, there's not a whole lot I would change about it I mean there's some stuff I would change but not a lot really no I, I'm very happy with my life if this was if this is the afterlife for me I yeah I could I could live with it I think I would be I think I would be okay with it so you know I, I've mentioned before that back in um, 2010 the summer of 20, 2010 I had this distinct feeling and I've had it ever since it's never gone away I've had it now for 12 years that something in our in our universe shifted like something something is different it's like something is off like I have not been smoking anything seriously I just I just ever since then I have had this distinct feeling that something has changed and things are not quite it's like an approximation of reality I don't know what it's probably just me maybe I went through something nothing significant happened in my life that summer I mean it wasn't I don't think it was anything going on with me or anything in my life. I just got this weird feeling that something has shifted. And the reality that we are now in is not quite right. I, I, don't, I don't know. I can't put my finger on anything specific. It just feels, it almost feels synthetic. Like, I don't know. Like, something about it is just not real. It feels, it feels fake. It feels like a TV set. It's just strange. But I don't think it's just that way for me. I feel like it's that way for everybody. Like th this, this reality that we live in is not... This is not quite right. And But every time I tried to discuss that with anybody, they looked at me like I was crazy. I've also had the feeling that we're being distracted from something. I've had that feeling since about t the summer of 2010 as well. That there is something going on. Like there's something building up that we are actively being distracted from. Like, here's your bread and circuses, come over here. Look at these shiny things, look at this, look at this. Don't look over here, look at this. I feel like we're being distracted from something that's coming. Like, we're not supposed to figure it out. We're not supposed to know about it yet. And I get a feeling that whatever it is is not good. I've had that feeling for a long time too, but whenever I try to talk to anybody about it, they, they think I'm nuts. Like, I, Mary, what are you talking about? What the hell are you babbling about? So, you know, you learn to keep it to yourself. Like, but I, st but I still feel it. It wasn't a fleeting feeling. I still feel it now. I, if anything, it's gotten stronger. That there is definitely something coming. Um... I don't think there's really anything we can do about it, though. So, it's like, well, what's the point in worrying about it? I'm not actively worried about it, but I am aware of it. I guess you could say I'm a bit concerned. Like, what, what is it, you know? I don't like surprises. I really do not like surprises. I like to know what's coming. But, I mean, I realize sometimes in life you can't, you can't know everything that's going to happen. But it would be kind of nice. But that brings up another question. Would you want to know when you're going to die? I, that's one thing I don't want to know. Would you want to know when you're going to die and how you're going to die? Like, it's, it's you can't stop it. Like, it, even if you know you can't stop it, it's inevitable. It's going, you're going to die at this time in this way. And you can't prevent it. See, I would, that I would not want to know. Although, if you did know, you could kind of plan ahead. I mean, that would be kind of nice, but I don't know. For some reason, the thought of having that knowledge is scary to me. Like, I don't, I don't want that knowledge. I don't want to know that. But, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know. Would you want to know when, maybe you could pick. Like, you could know when you're going to die. Or, like, maybe you just know the day you're going to die. I don't think I'd even want to know that. I don't even want to know the year I'm going to die. And I don't want to know how. I, I, don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. 
Let's let that one thing be a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, that knowledge scares me for some reason. The, the thought of knowing that scares me too much. I don't want to know. But they say death is nothing to be afraid of, but I, I don't know. What do you think happens after we die if we're not already there? We could already be there right now and not even know it. I mean, what if we died in our sleep and this is just, this is, this is the approximation that we now live in. We're in, we're in purgatory. We're in a holding pattern here on, in this plane of existence. Like this is just one version of existence and we're, we're in it because this is just where we have been put. I don't know. I think about stuff. I think about stuff like that. Here's another thought. Doing good deeds. Do you think... I was watching um, an episode of The Good Place yesterday. Yesterday evening. I feel like I'm parked crooked. I love the show The Good Place. And if you like um, questions that make you think, like philosophical stuff, you might like the show The Good Place if you haven't watched it. It's really... It's funny, but it's also kind of thought-provoking. I like the show. It's really good. I haven't finished. I haven't watched all the episodes, but I've watched, like, maybe two seasons. Two or three. Do you think, if you died right now, you have done enough good things to get to the good place? What does it take to get to the good place? Is there a good place? If there is a good place, do you think you've done enough to get there? And here's another question, and this is something that's bugged me forever. Since I was a kid, this has bugged me. If you are only doing good things to maybe get a payoff one day, like, I'm doing good things because I want to go to heaven. Well, if you're only doing it to go to heaven, does it count? Does your motivation count toward the good things you do? Is it even possible to do something to, 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 you know, to commit a truly altruistic act? Can you, is there really, can you truly be altruistic? I don't, I don't know. I don't know that you can. Because I know for me, whenever I do a good thing, I get a good feeling from it. So in a way, I still benefit from it. So I have to wonder how much of how much of the good deed is based on me wanting to feel better about myself or to have a good feeling and how much of it is based on truly wanting to help other people. I don't I don't know that I can objectively answer that for myself. I like to think that I do things truly just purely to help other people, but I don't know that I do. I'm not doing it because I want to get to heaven. Because I, I don't want to get all into religion or anything. I am not a religious person. So, I'm not looking at it that way. I'm not doing it because I think it will help me get to heaven. Because, I, honestly, I don't know what happens when we die. My thought is, I don't know what happens when we die. I do think there is something after we die, though. I, I don't think this is it. I don't think that once you die you disappear, like there is nothing to you other than your body. I think there is such a thing as a soul. Um, what? I, I think there is a part of you that, that is immortal. It will go on beyond your body. But where does it go? That I don't know. That I don't, I don't know. I think it is very possible there is a God, but I think if there is a God, it's nothing like we think it is. It's nothing like we imagine. And I don't think it's that worried about us. I don't think it is intimately involved in our lives like a lot of people think. That's just my opinion on it. I'm not trying to get into a religious debate or anything. I'm just telling you that's how I feel. So when I do a good things, I'm not thinking, oh, this will help me get to heaven. But I do get a good feeling from it. So in a way, it is kind of selfish. I look at it as, it is, it is, you have to ascribe a certain percentage of it to selfish, you know, you have a selfish motivation, like, it makes me feel better to do a good thing for somebody. So, does it count? 
Maybe it only counts like 50%. And I would ask also, this is an interesting question. If you knew that doing good deeds would guarantee that you would go to hell, would you still do good deeds? Honestly, I think I would still do good deeds because it just feels like the right thing to do where I am. And I think that my biggest motivation for doing good deeds here on this planet is that I, I just feel like it's the right thing to do. That's just what you should do. You should, you know, not treat people bad. You should, you should help people if you can that is just the right thing to do and I, I don't really have any other explanation other than that it's just that's just it feels right to me to do good things and to try to avoid doing bad things because it just feel it feels wrong I don't know but I'm not doing it because I want to pay off after I die I'm doing it because at the time it feels like the right thing to do so and I don't know. I, it's just, this is stuff that I've been thinking about all day. That dream that I had last night, really. Like, I can't stop thinking about that. Like, you're already here. Damn, what if we are? What if we, what if we are? Like, what if this is our afterlife? What if this is going to be our life forever and ever? I don't know, man. Some days I just want to go cry and hide under the bed. Like, no! Oh my God. I'm gonna have to deal with incompetent construction people forever. <sighs> oh no. Now, overall, I think my life is pretty good. I'm very grateful for the life I have. And I know it could be a lot worse. And I've been through a lot worse. And I have had periods of time in my life that did feel like hell on earth. Um, and I'm really glad that my life is not like that anymore. Um, you know, things always change. Things always change, and it's a good thing to keep in mind if you're going, if you're struggling right now and you're going through something bad, it won't last forever. It won't. Things always change. So if things are not what you want them to be, you can you can take steps to actively start to change your life. You can literally change your life. I'm putting my little thin jacket back on. Because I have oh, I stuck my hand in the pocket. That won't work. I have to go into Walmart. Damn it. Mm. My son is part of an, um, an extracurricular club at school. And he's in charge of bringing snacks this week. So I have to go in there. He's in charge of bringing snacks, which means I have to get snacks. Like it's, you know, I'm up. So I have to go in there and get some snacks for their, their meeting this week. I have been told what to buy. Yes, he signed me up to bring all kinds of shit. Like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That's really great. <laughs> oh, yes, I love going to spend lots of money. No, it's a club he really enjoys, and I, I don't mind. It's just funny because I just found out this afternoon that he needs them in the morning. Like, oh, well, shit, I guess I'm going to the store after my exercise class. Cool. Because later I'm not going to feel like going out. Because then I have to go home and actually do yard work. And it's clouding up. And I hope it's not going to rain. But I'm going to get the snacks. And I'm already sweaty from my exercise class. So I figured I'd go ahead and go home. And do my yard work. And get my shower after that. Just, you know. One shower to fix all the sweaty nastiness. But yes, I have been pondering questions today. I tell you, and again, I'm not trying to get all religious or anything. I know no politics, no religion, but this channel is like my other channel is like my living room. You know, it's all gussied up and decorated and pretty for visitors. This channel is like my upstairs bathroom. Like it's functional. You get what you get. It's not going to be super tidy. I don't have the nice little hand towels in here. I have all the utilitarian stuff in here. You know, we have the basics, but it's not all gussied up. That's this channel. <laughs> you get the upstairs bathroom when you come here. Um, I have had this, and I, again, I'm not trying to get into a religious debate. I just want to, this just occurred to me, and I've never gotten an answer to it. Um, 
And I, I remember asking this when I was a kid and I went to this church school and I was told not to, not to think about that anymore. I didn't get an answer. I was told maybe it'd be better if you just didn't think about that anymore. So I didn't bring it up anymore. In other words, shut up, Mary. Okay, so we pray to God. That's cool. I don't have a problem with that. But if you believe that, that everything is destiny, like, you know, God has a plan and everything is planned out and everything is going to go according to God's plan and that everything happens for a reason, why do you pray for a certain outcome to things? If it's all predestined, preordained, why would you pray to God for a certain outcome? Isn't it already, hasn't it already been determined how it's going to go? You know, you have A, B, or C could happen. Well, God has already decided which one is going to happen. Why would you pray for A or B or C to happen if God already knows which one? Are you trying to change God's mind? I mean, this is what I've always been trying to... Are you trying to, to tell God that God doesn't know what's best? You, I, again, I'm not trying to get all religious because I'm not a religious person. I'm not trying to debate anybody. It's just something that I've always wondered about. Why do you pray for certain outcomes if you believe that everything is according to God's plan? And that's the closest I'm going to get to talking about religion on here. I, I know. I try to keep things light and frothy, but that's just a question that I had, and I was told not to be best if I just didn't think about it anymore. This was when I was in, like, fourth grade or something. I can understand. Well, now, I, I will say that the church that I used to go to encouraged people to not do that, but you can pray to God to thank God for things that have already happened. You can pray to give thanks, but you can't pray to ask for things. You can't pray to ask for certain outcomes. Because that is kind of like questioning God's judgment. We were told not, you know, there were certain ways we were told to pray, and that was one of the things that they said. Of course, they gave us certain ways to do everything. And don't worry, whatever you're doing, I'm sure you're doing it wrong, and somebody is going to call you into the office and yell at you for it. I got, I got rebuked a lot for, like, everything I did. Everything I did was wrong. And it was very depressing because I, I just felt like a failure all the time. But anyway, that that's all. That's really all. I'm sorry. This is kind of a goofy video. This is kind of weird. Um, it's Sunday. It is a gorgeous day. And I'm going to go buy snacks. And then I'm going to go home and do some yard work. But thank you so much for being here. Um, I really hope that you have a fantastic day. And I'll see you again soon.